Lego Otto Langen vacuum engine part 2. Time to experiment a little bit and then finish the engine with a proper valve gear as the original is. First I want to experiment a little bit though. I have some ideas to control the valve in different ways. First of which is to let the lever that is connected to the valve actually slip off the camshaft. I could easily control this with a governor, so it sounds like a pretty good idea. So let's experiment with that first. I also realized that this piece fits perfectly on my vacuum, though I opted not to use it eventually, since it did uh, tend to uh, snap off, which wasn't very handy when dealing with a vacuum. <laughs> Okay, first uh, my original design of the governor was pretty cool, the one I used for my solenoid engine, but it could use some revision. Here I changed it so the governor shaft actually moves up and down, and the little gear that is attached to said shaft can also move up and down freely, while still being powered by the engine. And here I'm testing the implementation of that idea. The governor pushes a rod against the valve shaft which forces it on the camshaft. The governor in turn has a plate attached which moves up when the governor speeds up. This way the rod moves aside to let the valve rod slip. Okay, let's try it out. So the engine does run pretty well, but it does seem it fires a little too much. The engine also tends to stall when it doesn't fire enough, so the balance is a little bit precarious. And here you can see the new construction in action, with the governor and the valve rod. Okay, I think I can improve it a little bit. One of the issues that is weighing the engine down is that the governor needs to turn pretty fast, so I need to speed it up. And this does create a lot of friction. Another issue I had was that the belt slipped, so I added a little piece of tape. It's not that pretty, but it gets the job done. I also made the camshaft half as wide by removing one of the bits, so I can fine tune it a little bit better. Okay, let's see how well this works. Another issue I had was that the cylinder assembly wouldn't raise high enough, because it would get blocked. The two orange pieces are just that too wide, so I'll need to fix that. So I just removed them. It's fine if the assembly moves back and forth a little bit, it's held in place by the rubber bands anyway, so it's fine. And here you can see it in action, well, manually anyways. Okay, let's see how the engine runs now. Yeah, the engine still stalls occasionally. I think I know what the issue is. The camshaft timing isn't quite right. It's a little short. So let's change the camshaft to something I can adjust. I can just insert rods in this wheel and then change the amount of time the valve is up or down. Well, that part of the engine runs better now, but there's still the governor waiting down. So I kind of want to try replacing it with something else before I move on to the Otto Langen valve gear. So I'm experimenting with this new idea. A different design governor which is actually placed on the axle of the flywheel. It kind of acts as a flywheel itself as well. This could be handy. But actually I'm gonna size it down because otherwise it's just gonna take up all the space in the engine and it's gonna look kind of ridiculous. 
And this design can actually rotate the camshaft to the center, which kind of makes it stop being a camshaft of sorts. This way I can adjust the timing of the valve. And here it is in a test assembly. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work reliably. So from this point, I kind of just gave up and moved on to the final design of the engine. So let's get to that already. So time for the final design of the engine. So of course I need to build the Otto Langen engine's valve gear. Now it will not be an exact duplicate of the original engine. It will be in a different location as you can see, closer to the valve itself. Now this is a latching valve gear assembly, which we'll see later in the video how it works. Of course the valve gear also needs to be unlatched and that happens uh, by the cylinder assembly. And here's the first version of the valve gear. The idea is that it only fires the engine when the cylinder assembly is at the bottom. So you can see that it waits and every time it's unlatched by the cylinder assembly for the next cycle. This way the timing works much better and is much more organized. So let's see if this makes the engine a lot less chaotic and more proper like an Otto Langen engine. Well it seems it doesn't work quite yet. There's not enough power to move the piston. I think I need to adjust the valve a little bit. So after moving the engine up a little bit to give the valve more space to move and thus creating bigger gaps for the air to flow through, ah, there she goes. I am starting to notice one thing though. Let's see if you see it too. Yep, the timing seems way too short. The cylinder assembly already reaches the bottom before the valve gear even made a full cycle. So I think I need to adjust the timing a little bit and I'll do that in a minute. Another reason why I need to adjust the timing is that the cylinder doesn't reach the top all the time and it really should if I want to have a proper running engine. Luckily I found this Lego piece and it's perfect for a crankshaft. So this is the new valve crankshaft. With this, the valve is now way longer in the up position, which should ensure that the cylinder assembly goes to the top. Well, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and I'll see you guys next video. Goodbye.